welcome back to my YouTube channel, 5 Minute Economics, where I teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes. The topic for today is, as you can see, the Chamberlain model of duopoly, which is one interesting model. And in this particular video, I'll be talking about all you need to know about this model, be it the assumptions, diagrams, explanation, and basically everything. So yeah, let's get started. Also, guys, please don't forget to like this video and do, do, do subscribe to my YouTube channel. It'll mean a lot to me. And do follow me on my Instagram handle as well, which is also known as 5 Minute Economics. So giving you a brief history of the models of duopoly which we've already covered and how they were criticized by Chamberlain who gave his own model henceforth. So I'm not going in depth because I made three specific videos on these topics. I'll attach all the links in the comment section below if you have any doubts go and watch out those videos. So the Cordon model was the model guys where you know firms tend to ignore their rivals. They just think okay like let the rival be we'll do our own pricing, we'll do our own output everything on its own. Secondly, is the Stackelberg model where we study that there is one leader who takes you know the decisions and then there are people who follow him, leader follower model. And then there is a veteran model when they think that rival is going to keep the output constant, like foolish of them to think that, right? So all these Chamberlain criticized these models and he was given a more practical approach where he said that the firms know their interdependence. They know that, you know, hum log ek pe dependent hai and we should recognize that. Why just keep your eyes, you know, shut and be open to that each firm's pricing and output will affect the market and each other's decisions as well so they know that if i'm going to make some decision the other firm is going to react to it so they're aware of that they are aware of interdependence and obviously as i said they keep the reaction in mind and thirdly if they do so they will of course achieve the monopoly prices which is the highest price yeah if they keep that in mind and also over here we have differentiated products unlike you know homogeneous products which were already used so this is you know why we are now starting Chamberlain because these three models were criticized by him so let us quickly run through the assumptions of this model guys number one there are two forms of course it is a duopoly model oligopoly is uh, where there are you know few firms but duopoly is when there is there are only two firms so classic duopoly model secondly products as i told are differentiated and not homogeneous Thirdly, of course, yeah, but the guy firms are rational and they, you know, want to maximize their own profits. Okay. And lastly, guys, firms do not engage in any type of collusive behavior. So now guys coming to the crux of the model, which is the Perry diagram. And as you can see, I have um, done multiple uh, attempts to draw this diagram. Trust me when I say that four times I drew and, you know, just rubbed it because I wanted to make sure that I am making a diagram which is understandable to you. Of course, there are a few constraints on a whiteboard, but yeah, I've tried my best. So over here, guys, it's a simple explanation. Follow along with me. So we have two firms, A and B. Now, seller A or firm A, as you can see, he enters into the market as a monopolist. There's no one, right? He's the first one. He is leading a monopoly. He is producing at how much output OA amount out of output and how much is at what price is he selling at OP price, which is a very good high price. Okay, this is uh, these are the two um, you know uh, curves MR one and MR uh, two, uh, which are drawn and dotted for A and B respectively. On the x-axis we have quantity, on the y-axis we have price as usual, right? So what is the profit of the seller A who is a monopolist OASP? This this if you can see this whole chunk is his profit. But what happens? Seeing this, you know, the lucrative profit seller B also enters into the same market. Now, what happens is he knows that, you know, he has this part of market demand, which is left, which is SD1. And how much output does B produce? B produces a B amount of output, which you can see this is the part he produces and at the price OP2. Now, what happens? A is a smart guy. A has seen that B has also entered. So rather than you uh, not, uh, you know, not reacting at all or ignoring or thinking that he will not do this, he will do that. He actually plays smart and he reduces his output from OA, which he was doing, uh, producing initially, to OE. He makes his output half. Okay, that is why, why I have drawn the uh, diagram two, three times. Uh, you know, was the mistake was that these three blocks which are there one two three should look equal because they are supposed to be equal i know still they don't look exactly equal, but when you draw please make sure that they are in equal proportion so what happens from a from oa he reduces his output to oe and remember oe is equal to ab which is b's output now b also recognizes that you know this interdependence so he says okay now i will produce e amount of output rather than what i thought initially as ab and he says that we will do that at op1 price 
in doing that both are at a benefit right initially he was doing at p2 and a also thought that you know b is maybe eating out his output so now both are very smart mutually they've decided so o a was the total output right initially i told you o is the total output ye output hai and a said that i will sell o e amount and b says that i will sell e amount this much this much they have divided it equally and what is the price they will sell at they will sell at price p1 which is beneficial for both of them so they equally share this profit o a s p1 which was there they have equally shared and divided so that is what chamberlain said in his model that unlike the previous models where you know the firms reacted differently here firms are smart they recognize their mutual independence interdependence basically and you know then they react uh, so also guys in doing so they have reached a point where they are at a nash equilibrium they can actually do two things either reach nash equilibrium or you know reach to price wars so if they are smart they will reach to nash equilibrium and they have no incentive to either change the price or the output otherwise they can reach uh, have price wars you know both of them try to undercut don't know just a competitors like coke and pepsi they both try to undercut 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 both will be at a loss you know hum 100 ka bech rahe to aap 99 ka 98 ka 97 ka both will lose the market rather than that let's decide both will sell at 95 so that is what you know reaching the nash equilibrium rather than reaching and uh, situation of price wars in this model Lastly, guys, coming to the criticism of the model. So, as Cornwall and Petron, here also it is a closed model, doesn't allow entry and exit of firms, which is, of course, not right. And secondly, there is not easy sharing of profits. How we said this much, A le lega, this much B le lega. How easily we said, it's not actually that easy uh, when it comes to practical world. And lastly, uh, one of the economists known as Fellner, he also had criticized this uh, model, saying that you know monopoly pricing cannot be reached when you are in a duopoly. So these are the few criticisms of this model. I hope this video was useful to you. If it was, please comment in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video pretty soon.